Machine. Hey, what's up with it, y'all? Welcome to my podcast, Cold Narratives. I'm your host, Iceberg Green. About to let y'all hear some of these cold narratives. Check it out. Okay, y'all. So this is from uh, Jenny Clark. Um, I found this on YouTube, and she's discussing politics and power. Uh, she breaks down um, how they intertwine. And uh, I'm going to play this footage, y'all, and uh, y'all check this out. And if you need to follow her on YouTube, again, her name is Jenny Clark, and this is fair use. Uh, check this footage out, and I'll be back. Let's talk about what office politics might look like. Typically, it's about people vying for visibility, power, or perceived power, dominance, or preference over someone else. It often means picking sides and aligning with someone or some faction believed to be more influential or dominant. It almost certainly involves gossip, speculation, and backbiting. Think of it like playground dynamics, where kids were playing king of the hill, trying to push the other one from the favored post. At school, teachers would sometimes intervene, but when the teacher left, the same people would often return to claim their intended position. This doesn't have to be a bad thing if the person is benevolent and seeking to assert influence for the benefit of others as well as their own, but more often than not, the intention is selfish and forceful. Okay, well put. She put that eloquently. She she did that. So... What I'm saying is we have a lot of that going on um, instead of focusing on the people. We have a lot of these lobbyists and these people, these corporations with a lot of money and they're sending them at these politicians and they're not turning it down because it's to benefit them. They're not saying, hey, it, does this come with a policy that's going to help uh, black people or Asian people or whatever else? You know, the case may be. No, it's for the company's best interest to, you know make uh allow them to stay corporate you feel me so um with that being said uh, i'm gonna play the rest of this con content from jenny clark and um it's spelled g-i-n-n-y c-l-a-r-k-e you can find her on uh youtube and um this is some cool content and uh, i like how the lady bring it, how the sister bringing it but uh check this out david hawkins author of power versus force writes power appeals to what uplifts dignifies and ennobles force must always be justified whereas power requires no justification force is associated with the partial power with the whole here's how i interpret that power is not a bad word as long as it is sought to uplift others for the whole or all this idea of power can run counter to what we've been led to believe about effective team dynamics in the workplace. Strong leaders can diffuse unproductive chatter by building a culture of transparency if they model and explicitly state to their team what they will and will not tolerate. You might say those leaders are standing in their power by demonstrating integrity, strong values, and equity. And I remember when I say leaders, I don't just mean people in leadership positions. You can be a leader who stands for good on your team. Okay, so how do y'all feel about power now? Um, in her words. Um, and I actually um, agree with her. Because power um, in the wrong hands, <laughs> you see what we get. You have a district, you have a city, you have elected officials that um, you can vote to keep or um, get them up out of here. So yeah, that that's just another point. And... You know, it, it's, it's kind of set in stone the way this government works. I mean, it's, you know, it's already always been ran by trade, war. It's always been like that. And now everyone, because of the Internet, because of the way the world turns, so much information, people are starting to really see it for what it is. You know, it's been so many years of people thinking that, oh, they're, they're doing this for us. You know, we, we vote for them. We advocate for their policies or whatever the case may be. And the corporations are the one that benefit the most. And like I said, man, it's a lot of us out here that are caught up in a system. And when I say that, um, they're in a system of white supremacy. Okay. And a lot of y'all may disagree with white supremacy, but it exists. If you live in these rural cities um, across the Bay Area, you know, I can just go on. You, there's places in the, uh, in, in the Bay Area where you can't It feel like a sundown town. You know, they don't call it that, but when you drive through that area, you know I'm about to keep it lit. 
I'm not stopping here. And people from the town or wherever, they know what's happening. When you ride through certain areas, even in a man, I'm listening, in a bear, you go ride through Fremont late night. A black man. Just actually just go walk. I mean, I ain't going to, you know, but I'm just saying them type of areas. Okay, then. Yeah. We can go all the way over to the other side to Novato and all that. Yeah. So we deal with it, too. But yeah, let me get, I'm getting all the way off topic, man. My bad. I be going, you see, there's so much going on in the world to everything leads to something, you know, and that's why this power politics, those two things are something that's um, holding us back. I also will say that black people, black Americans suffer the most with every policy they make. I, I, I'm honestly, unless you go to a HBCU, most black people can't even afford child care. Just first off, they got their family members and they people keeping their kids. So knock it off with that. Um, HBCUs. Not a lot of uh, people are able to get to a HBCU. You can take these classes, you can do all that, but you also have to be able to live. They're not giving out money like that to everybody. They make it seem that way. But go to a HBCU. There's a lot of people that are thriving, but there are also a lot of people that are seeing, you know, how it's corrupt and ran by politicians and corporations. Okay? You can never compare a HBCU funding to a university. Don't even don't even do that, but you should be able to. You can. So I'm I'm going on with this power uh, thing because it all intertwines, man, and we're seeing it unfold right before our eyes. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't. What 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 do I like about any? What do you like about any of this? And I'm just breaking it down uh, to you know to the lowest common denominator, which is the government. I'm just breaking it down, y'all. And whoever they send in, whoever they have in the back, you know these people prepping them for these uh, speeches and debates, they're doing a poor job. They're doing a horrible job for both of these people when it comes to Black Americans. They do not care about us specifically remember that y'all wherever they get in there they got a lot of clean up to do because he ooh, he made a mess so whoever they get in there what they gonna say different now if they say reparations ooh, whoever come out and say reparations out of any party they got the black vote for sure black america well, they got us Whoever comes out, let me say it again, whatever politician comes out and say reparations, I'm talking about besides California because we know what we have in California. We know that. But when we're talking about the higher power, the government, Black Caucus, again, Black Caucus, NAACP, why don't they say reparations? It's been a million years they've been in, able to enact policies and do certain things. Why don't they should be the main ones screaming, give black people reparations so they can just leave us alone. They don't even do that. They they fat in their pockets with this power politics. That's what they doing. So I just gave you all so many um, examples and analogies of what's not happening. Of these two presidents. Neither one of them um, bring anything to the table tangibly for black Americans. I don't see it. Um, and again, power politics. Y'all have a good one. Iceberg Green. I'm out of here. Green machine. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I also want to say God bless those going through the struggle. Make sure you watch out for them cold narratives that the government trying to push on us, y'all. To all my black people, I will be nothing without y'all. God bless you all. Thank you.